To start today's notes, we're going to prove the interior angle sum theorem, which is stated down below. So it says, given the theorem, the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees, complete the proof for this theorem. So the only thing that we're given is a triangle. And then we need to prove that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three is 180 degrees. So this is not one of our congruency proofs. So it's gonna look a little bit different because they are using the measures of angles and not angles themselves being congruent, okay? So filling the missing reasons below. So let's look at the picture first, and then let's move it down and take a look at statement number two. So we started with triangle ABC, and they've got all three angles numbered. And then we have this dotted line DCE, okay? It's dotted because that was something that that was added to the picture. So if we look at statement number two, it says through point C, draw line DCE parallel to AB. So let's note that it is parallel. So through point C, I'm just gonna put a dot there, draw a line parallel to AB. So that line, remember, is called an auxiliary line, okay? But going back to this statement, it says through point C, we're gonna draw this one line, okay? Parallel to AB. So we're gonna go back um, to the parallel postulate from the parallel and perpendicular lines unit, the last unit we did. And we know that through any point not on a given line, is C is not on AB, By that postulate, we know that there exists only one line parallel to that line. So again, our reasons are backing up what we say on the left side, okay? The next line says that the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle ACD, and the measure of angle three equals the measure of BCE. So let me go back up to the picture. So the measure of angle one, I'm gonna highlight is right here. Now it states the measure of that angle is equal to the measure of A C, D, this angle right here. Okay, the angle is determined by the three letters. And the measure of angle three, so this angle here, is equal to the measure of B, C, E, this angle right there, okay? That's true because the two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So we're gonna start by saying if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the way we always start that statement. Now the names of those angles are alternate interior, but I'm not gonna state that alternate interior angles are congruent because they don't use the congruent symbol, they use the equivalent symbol, okay? So I'm gonna state that then the, again, the little m stands for measure. So then the measures of the alternate interior angles are equal, okay? Looking at the next statement, it says that the measure of ACD angle two and BCE is 180 degrees. So let's go back up and find those angles. So I'm gonna use a blue pen to make a dot. So ACD, this one, 
plus the measure of angle 2, this one, and the measure of angle BCE. All three of those angles form a straight line. Okay? So we're going to write that the sum of the measures as we are adding, again, M for measures, the sum of the measures of any number of angles that form a straight line is 180 degrees. And then the last statement, okay? So based on the three statements on the left side, using a highlighter, we know that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of ACD. So where we see the measure of ACD, it was replaced with the measure of angle 1, okay? That's because they are, whoops, I want to use the pen. That's because they are equal in measure, okay? And then the other angle, so let's use, we can use the light blue. The measure of 3 is equal to the measure of BCE. And so down below, you can see the measure of 2 stayed the same in the middle. BCE was changed to the measure of angle 3 because they are equivalent, okay? So we've seen the substitution property with um, congruency. We can also use the substitution property with equivalency. Um, substitution, let's undo that so I can spell that correctly. Again, the substitution property states that you can replace an angle or a segment with its congruent angle or segment, but we can also use it for equivalency and we can replace the measure of angle CD with angle 1 because they are equivalent in measure, okay? So we want to state it's the substitution property and not actually state what the substitution property is. Okay, on the back side, um, the exterior angles of a triangle. So in the picture to the right, remember all of our exterior angles are outside of the triangle where the interior angles are inside. So recall that at each vertex of a polygon, an exterior angle may be formed by extending one side of the polygon so that the interior and exterior angle of that vertex, so let's uh, look at, say, 1 and 2, only because there's a 1 for the interior angle. So at this vertex of the triangle, we have the interior and exterior angle, which forms a linear pair. Okay, so they are supplementary. It says recall because we talked about polygons in our very first uh, unit. And remember that supplementary angles, the measures add up to 180 degrees. Now the exterior angles, remember for any polygon, add up to 360 degrees. We have a theorem that deals with these exterior angles. And it is that the measure of an x ring of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measure of the two non-adjacent interior angles. So if we look at the measure of angle 4, it's the sum of the two. So I'm going to add two things. And the measures I'm going to add are the measures of the angles that are not adjacent to it. 3 is adjacent to 4. So I don't want to add those measures but it adds up to angle 1 and 2. So the measure of angle 4 equals the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. So if we look at the first question, which we need to set up algebraically, it says find the value of x. So this exterior angle of 4x plus 30 equals the sum of the measures of the two angles that are not adjacent. So 5x plus 4x. Well, we can subtract out the 4x's, divide 30 by 5, and x is 6. In the next one, it says that two angles of a triangle have measures of 70 and 85. So let's draw that. Draw any triangle. It doesn't have to be drawn to scale. 
we have a 70 degree angle and an 85 degree angle. Well, knowing that all three angles in the interior add up to 180, this angle is going to be 25 degrees. Which of the following is not the measure of an exterior angle of the triangle? Well, let's find every one of them. So if I extend this side, the supplement of 25 is 155 degrees. Extend this side, the supplement of 70 is 110. And then extend this side, the supplement of 85 is 95. So I have the 155, I have the 95, I have the 110. That must mean the answer is number one. And number three, it says the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle measures 34 degrees. Okay, so let's draw a picture. Remember from the reading, an isosceles triangle has two congruent sides. If the vertex angle is 34, that's the angle that's included between these two congruent sides. Okay, what is the measure of an exterior angle at the base? So that would either be this one or this one. And they are the same measure because in any triangle, if two sides are the same, then the angles across from those sides are also the same. So I'm actually going to call these x for now, and I'll call this y. And remember, the interior angles at the base are the same, and then the exterior angles are going to be the same. And I know that the interior angles of a triangle, so those two x's plus the 34 is equal to 180 degrees. So we subtract 34, we get 146, divide by 2, and x is 73. And then I also know this is a linear pair, and that y is the supplement to x. So 73 plus y equals 180, and we subtract, and y is equal to 107 degrees. The next part says, why does the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle equal? So we're not proving it, but why does this work? So we more or less need to explain, okay? We need to work on our explanations based on our quarterly assessments. So I like to provide a statement, which I'll number this time, and then back it up with the reason why that's true, okay? So for instance, I know to start that A plus B plus C is 180 degrees because the interangle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees. Okay. I also know that um, B plus D is 180 degrees. Because if two angles form a straight line, then their sum is 180 degrees. Okay. Now in step three, from algebra, we know that if both of these expressions are equal to 180 degrees, they are equal to each other. So A plus B plus C equals B plus D. And that's by the substitution property. Okay, so we're placing an expression with its equivalent. And then now, uh, with A plus B plus C equal to B plus D, we can subtract the B's and we're left with number four, A plus C equals D. And that's by the subtraction property. We need to always include the word property. Okay? And that proves or that explains why the sum of the measures of the two non-adjacent, so A plus C to that exterior angle equals the exterior angle. So A plus C equals D. 
And we're going to finish with two constructions. So the first construction says using a compass and straight edge on the diagram below, construct equilateral triangle with AB as a side. Now, key word here is, or words, is on the diagram below. So it must be on the line, OK? So using segment AB, we're going to construct an equilateral triangle. And we know from the reading, an equilateral triangle has all sides congruent. So you take your compass, put it on one of the endpoints, pencil on the other. I'm going to bring it down a little bit, because you're going to make an arc that goes through B all the way up. OK, then move it over to the other endpoint. And we're going to draw another arc that intercepts the arc we just made, which should also go through A. So I did not change my radius of the compass uh, at any point. So now a triangle has three vertices. So there's already a dot here. We already have a point here. We're going to put a dot here for the third point. And then you're going to take your straight edge and draw the sides of the triangle. So I'm going to connect A to this vertex, draw a segment that connects B to that vertex. And it did not say to label the triangle, such as triangle ABC. So that one's done. And the last one. The last one says, using a compass and straight edge, construct an isosceles triangle. And we do need to label it BMS, where sides BS and MS are congruent. And those are the legs. The legs are of length x, and the base is of length y. So because there's not a segment or ray already provided, we're going to um, start by drawing a ray. So take your straight edge and draw a ray. So a ray has one endpoint. I'll do that all in black and an arrow at one end. Okay. Now it says the base is of length y, and we want to draw the base first. So open up your compass so that one endpoint is on, or the point of the compass is on one endpoint in the segment and the pencil on the other. And we measure that, and we show the people grading our test that we measured it by making an arc. And then we're going to copy that side down to our ray. So to copy that, the point, or the compass, point goes on the end point, and we draw an arc. And then we put a point here for that side of the triangle. So there's the base. And then um, the legs are of length x. So because I don't have enough room to put my compass this way, I am going to put my compass point here on this side. And I'm going to draw an arc. First, I need to open it up to have it the same length. And these are my legs. So now I take my compass point. I'm not changing my radius. I'm keeping it the same, but rotating my compass. Put it on one end point of that segment that you just constructed. And we need to make an X. So we draw an arc from that end point, slide it over to the other end point of our segment, and we draw another arc so that it intersects that arc. OK? Again, not changing the radius, so I know those segments are going to be the same length. I put my third vertex of the triangle up here, and let's draw the sides. So I'll draw those in green. So from this vertex here, down to that vertex, and to our last vertice. Now this triangle did say to label it. Okay, so going back to the question, it said that BS is congruent to MS. Okay, they share a common letter. So that means that's the point of intersection of those two sides. So S would go up here. And then B and M go down here. And now I have BS congruent to MS. As I said, these are the legs. Not that you need to label these. And this is the base. And that's it for today.